Hello and welcome everyone. This is going to be the Daily Dharma. My name is Dina. Thank you so much for joining. Special welcome to everyone here today for this message. I definitely appreciate you. Let's go ahead and start out by getting some cards from the Sacred Geometry Activations Oracle, <clears throat> the code cards. I haven't laid out any messages preceding this. Feeling a little rushed. Have lots going on and doing today, but I'm going to try to steady the flow of energy and see what needs to come out. We have one popping out already here. Let me grab that. Fertility number 27. Often fertility talks about the growth process. Under the deck we have Merkaba. And also creativity, uh, things that good, bad, and ugly go back into the soil, creates the fertility. Um, need for nutrients, supplements, your health may be called into question here. <clears throat> but with Merkaba coming out, this is something that is related to your influence and your expansion process and also your ability to to move through life the journey of life because merkaba is the the vehicle of the of the soul let's see what else wants to come out here from the back tantric journey we had that one yesterday and i did go through and shuffle these pretty well this morning setting the energy and intention romantic love 39 so yesterday, the Tantric Journey and the Kundalini Shakti card from the Kali deck popped out together. And so now that we have this in conjunction with the romantic love, this can definitely be a union and, you know, coming into remembrance this morning as I was shuffling through the Akashic Tarot deck the faded meeting meeting card did pop out. <clears throat> so I don't know if some of you are coming into a meeting with a soulmate, or you may define that through other terms. Many people will talk about how the twin flame journey, for instance, activates all of the chakras and and that is ultimately the tantra that is being activated and called upward through the chakra systems. Now, you don't need to be on the twin flame train to be able to have this happen in your situation or your life. So let's get a couple more cards here, maybe two more. Soul time. So definitely could be soulmate, putting that between fertility and tantric journey. Something that's helping the growth process, helping us to be more creative, inspired, and perhaps even uh, making us feel like we have to take a step back and integrate a lot of shifts, changes, and realizations. Anytime the frequency changes or activations occur, this can definitely uh, be a time where things are kind of shaking loose. We've had that message come through a few times. And root chakra, we had that one as well yesterday. The base of the spine, the place where the kundalini is said to rest ready and um, poised for us to have an activation or to call it forth into our lives. So our connection with our environment, with our body itself here with root chakra, let's split the bottom of the deck, third eye chakra being revealed. And let's move into the return of spirit deck. So what can we say? This um, It seems to be talking about uh, a love or soulmate. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be platonic family or otherwise. A situation perhaps for some, since this is general. Some type of love influence, the energy of love itself being the activating influence that is affecting our health in some way and needing to take time to rest and reflect and integrate these somewhat loosened, shaken up energies 
that are at play in our world here and being able to intuitively apply what's coming to our attention to both the soul journey and where we're going forward from here. Seems that there's something else, but I definitely feel like there is a physical dimension to this. Let's see what popped out here. Underneath is innocence, a return to innocence. Is there a song about that? And sexuality, quite interesting. So this one did come out with the pre-shuffle and the the follow-up post shuffle after yesterday's and we had talked about it with the kundalini and the tantra i'm going to put this one dead center and so the kundalini energy if you haven't heard me talk about this before is not only the primal life force energy the creative spiritual force that is coursing through us and can become subdued uh repressed it can be all kinked up in different types of, let's just call it unhealth, because we're talking about health here, it seems to be. But this sexual energy is also the same type of a thing. Being coiled at the root chakra has much to do with the ability to preserve and perpetuate both the species as well as our own personal DNA. It's a very primal instinctual urge to activate that energy and for many if not all of us there have been different situations that have created various levels of judgment of personal expression or lack thereof restriction of and judgment of our own and others creative sexual tantric energy how bold others are, how confident, how creative, how personal and autonomous versus the ones who are not, um, those that are meek, seen as weak or otherwise. And so we're talking a bit about the recovery of our own energy and the rising and the I don't want to say falling. Falling seems to be a word that symbolically is charged with failure but even with the fallen angel it's kind of talking about our descent into the body from the realms of perhaps our innocence and our childlike essence when we i mean this may be for some a stretch but just follow the the symbol here of when the soul becomes identified into a body, the cup, when the the elixir of life that is spirit is poured into the vessel, the cup, and the ability to make the contact with the vessel here, and this in the center here being that, that union, the journey that is the interlocking two triangles, one above, one below, that represent in alchemy the the water is the downward pointed triangle and the fire is the upward pointed triangle. Uh, so it's interesting that we're talking about this return to innocence, feeling the urge to switch the decks. Let's keep the innocence there. So some type of a return to innocence, a return to our pure potentiality. And with Journey and Merkaba. I don't know if there's a literal journey on the horizon for some of you or if this is like a soul time meditative astral journey or something here, but you may be manifesting love. You may be questioning your current situation or reviewing your love resume, however that hits you, maybe personal to yourself and using your intuitive self to understand and awaken more of yourself because parts of you may have slipped into some type of justification or unconsciousness or another that is involved in this romantic love or other type of love again let's see what the akashic tarot has to say 
if that one wants to come out. Ooh, beautiful, and that's a pile. So under the deck, we have the Queen of Roses, and this one wants to be seen. Wow, I haven't seen this one before. Will, Wisdom, and Mind. Interesting, we've got the indications of fire and water. Those are the triangles that I'm speaking about. Interesting, correct? Number 20, to me, two plus zero. Two is cooperation, but the 20 card in the tarot is typically judgment, and it's shown generally with Archangel Gabriel blowing his trumpet. So the will, the wisdom, and the mind. And it's talking to me in this moment about our navigation, the journey, the embodiment alignment process of gathering all of our fire and water. It reminds me, I saw the waterfall card in the pre-shuffle. <clears throat> and to create the heart-based alignment that reaches up to the kingdom, the king, so being the ascension in process, uh, gathering that into your body. And then that symbol in the center there, I believe it's called the triketa, can be an ancient, uh, I want to call it pagan, perhaps. You might call it something else, Celtic or something. The interwoven circle with the the three um, points there. I believe is talking about our ability to be spiritual bodies. And also the three can talk about with the matriarchy, maiden, mother crone. We had innocence, remember? So talking about the lifetime, the maturing process. We can also talk about the patriarchal vision symbol as the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost being the essence of the Kundalini, the divinity in form from the above and the below, the perpetuation of the species, again, the planting of the seed, the children that we are in this world, and then will, wisdom, and mind. It's like the ability to harness the Akashic heritage is the wisdom. The mind is our ability to perceive and apply and to make sense of, to integrate the fire and the water, the passion and the impulse and the desire and the emotion, the psychic realms, and to integrate that all into a, a journey that is meaningful, that calls forth all that we are into the process of our becoming. So falling falling down, the first card out was Archangel Gabriel. And as I said the name earlier, I had already seen this. So the three, which is very interesting. So we talked about him with the 20 and the triketa being the three. Three to me is the number of the goddess, the number of creative or also, you know, progeny. It is the meeting of minds, the meeting of hearts, but then it's not just one plus one equals two. One plus one generally would be seen alchemically to equal three because there are so many intricates, intricacies of personality and person and vessel and soul that are specific to the process of each individual. And then when they come together, there's an inter, an overlap, like where we see two circles cross and then you see that Vesica Pisces in the center talking about what is birthed from the interaction of two souls or two energies. And so the other three that fell down we have the 19, which precedes that 20, obviously, reflection. And this shows the moon shining down. The 19 is generally the sun card. So we're talking here about um, our reflection upon possibly the shadow and the journey with that boat going across the still waters under the full moon with some clouds in the sky, the lights on the shore in the various homes. So maybe you the various homes to me in this moment, thinking about as we go through the journey of life, down the river of life, 
are we perceiving other individuals as those lighted homes? We see the lights, we might be able to peer through some windows if we're close enough, if they're lit, but can we really understand the context of a home that we've never been invited inside of and to really estimate everything? You know, it might look poor on the outside, but they might have some family uh, heirlooms that are priceless. A rich home, you know, we could go by their windows and it might look like complete opulence and treasure, but unbeknownst to the us, everything may be on rental. Everything may be, they may be up to their gills in debt and so on. So appearances and the reflection upon self, other, our journey, and as we pass by other individuals, what are the ideas that are coming forward in your reflection time, your soul time here? Second card out, six of keys, keys being the earth pentacle suit, diamonds. This individual sometimes comes through where in, in crescent moon, I, I mistakenly thought this, I didn't know which way this moon was going, whether it was building or waning. And this is actually in the book, I looked it up and it's said to be the moon in its becoming. So moving into the fullness. So we are moving into the second Capricorn moon by the time of this broadcast, a few more days here and it'll be full. So the light at night is already quite bright and it's like, I don't even need a flashlight outside. Uh, we're so right now we're just a little bit beyond the quarter. Uh, yeah, literally probably within, within 30 to 45 degrees of the full moon. So in any event, <clears throat> this is one of the individuals you can see out there. There's water. Possibly you can see it out the window. He's not even looking out the window, but is someone in the boat looking into him. And this also reminds me of, I know a few of you are creating your own channels and your own callings and doing your sacred work in various ways. And at the time of the Capricorn full moon, this is where we start to, to release certain things. But with Capricorn, it's where we're also seeing or making plans to be able to see some type of achievement. So I don't know if you're building something on any level, whether that's emotional, uh, relational, or some type of artistry or plan of action or um, literal building inventory, so to speak, or doing your artistry, making things, writing, drawing, practicing some kind of art or craft. The Six of Keys talks about balancing those earthly things. And so if you're constantly in a state of productivity, then the need to then leave and, and uh, get outside and be in the world to connect with other individuals, to be able to gain new inspiration often requires new input because we already know what we know and we can divine and be inspired, but there is so much more creative juice when we crisscross energies with things that do and don't resonate. So we can kind of, um, like the, the gemstones that are tumbled, you put them in with various grits of sand and friction creating stuff and you tumble them around and it's kind of like how we are out in the collective when we when we interact with various energies it's attempting to smooth the edges so that we can all get together so i'm going to move on from that so eight of keys again eight of pentacles here our work look at this the master artisan. So this one I do believe came out recently with the six of keys together, the six and the eight. So six being some type of creative balance and the eight being the recurring cycle, things that repeat or a cycle coming around. So this individual is hard at work and 
one of the things I didn't notice until after I had seen this card before was that the, the gentleman that's standing up appears to be putting, <clears throat> to me, it appears to be diamonds in that individual's hand. So it's like <clears throat> he's sitting here. He's got a number of cups, vessels, swords, which again can represent the fire in the water. Or, well, no, the cup is the container, which would be the earth. Its contents would be the water. The sword would be the the uh, intellect or the masculine. Yes, and um, I was looking around for some fire in the depiction. It seems that the fire is somewhat missing here. But it's, it has this idea of all of these treasures being created, this artisan doing his work and being paid and he's looking down but he doesn't look very happy it's as though to say you know all of this work is worth more than even these diamonds <clears throat> and the guy is real nonchalant dropping them into his hands he's like oh yeah that's good here you go and um there's a i guess a, a level of maybe not dissatisfaction but uh imbalance I would say, even though the eight generally is about the courage and the balance and the uh, the loop, the return. But maybe what we're talking about here is an old pattern that precedes our lifetime having impact upon our ability to create. And if we become caught up in what we are getting in, is it recompense is the word that's wanting to come forward? What are we getting with that reward and punishment mentality versus are we able to tap into the divine why? Why are we doing this? Why are we showing up day in and day out to do something if we're not feeling that that connection with the outcome or the work or the audience and Archangel Gabriel here is really telling us that blowing of the trumpet with judgment is maybe something, maybe some way that you have been applying your work to the ends that someone else is getting the big impact while you get some of the crumbs is kind of the idea here. Like when we put all of our efforts towards others and then we come home at night, we might have enough to pay the bills, but those were all of our grand treasures that we created. And there may be this urge to, to get the paycheck. And I always see this imagery of the lab rats or hamsters just kind of, they get trained to go through the maze every day and push their lever and get their pellet. And that's their life. They can't re get out of the cage. I did see cage in the Akashic Tarot before also, but, um, it seems that those are sideways travels versus the upward travel of personal autonomy, sovereignty, and the ability to overcome the distractions and to actually apply the above and below into something quite meaningful. Be insightful and established. Yes, with the root chakra, we do need to ground and also to ground deeply and then connect with the community in some type of a way here but let's uh shuffle just a little bit more queen of roses what do we make of the queen of roses something about your bloom cycle also with this merkaba and the sexuality and the innocence is like and fertility and the romantic love. Yes, the romantic love is almost like that blooming lotus, the blooming flower, the rose petals. And <clears throat> she seems to be, as I put that down for a moment, she seems to be looking into the face of the rose in her meditation. And it's almost like the rose may be the root chakra, the kundalini energy being called forward in this grand meeting of this green and red energy and we see that pillar here being the green energy which i associate with uh archangel raphael the below card setting your course wanted to show three of scrolls so three of scrolls about sacred knowledge so there's definitely 
an idea of getting out of the house, <laughs> but there's also this soul time, which says that, you know, there's a need to reflect upon our personal and what we have in our own repertoire, our own autonomy, sovereignty, as well as how we show up in the world, how we're utilizing the creative fert fertile energies of the world to seed our, our legacy and what comes through us. It's whether we see it as mundane or boring, you could even, you know, work at something like, you know, fast food or, or some type of institution or pushing papers or pushing buttons at a factory. It doesn't matter as much as how we do it and the energy that we do that with. Like I'm, I often see the imagery of somebody who's just like pushing a lever or just uh, duh, and exhausted at the end of the night versus somebody who's perhaps able to play some music, whether that's even just humming a tune, creating your own soul music, whatever comes through you and doing it with rhythm, you know, and going through and like creating some, I think I've said this before in a reading. It's like, you know, if you know, you have to take one, two, three, four, five, shoot it down the line then make it with some type of um, body momentum and movement. It helps those energies move through. It's like, why am I doing this? Because um, of the need for industry and also for getting some money to recognize that in this earthly realm, we do need to pay to play at some level until we can, until we can activate and allow into our, awareness a way out of that cage and so how do we plan our escape from that we have to recognize that uh it's the will the wisdom and the mind and setting a course here to creatively escape any type of doldrum any type of boredom any type of unmet circumstance where we're not asking, taking, receiving, able to perceive our greatness and how to apply that differently. Um, surrounded by prosperity now at the bottom, number 30. Your attention is being drawn to the infinite nature of reality. That which exa exists outside the known is beyond measure. Another flutter of the electricity in here. I swear the last few days it keeps buzzing in that manner and I haven't perceived this over the last couple of years that I've been here so there may be some energetic anomalies going on in your system like there's been times long ago that I used to have this pinch type energy where I'd go to like flip my hair or turn my neck and there would be this extreme hot shooting pain up up the back of the scalp and um that was coming into my mind as like, you know, when you're moving and flowing and all of a sudden you've got like this, ooh, ah, something like, like stepping on a, a Lego, you know, that's a, a common thing. And I just realized there's that sea turtle amongst all of these others. The sea turtle travels with its home on its back. Everywhere that it roams, it is home. And that is the temple. That's the sovereignty. It doesn't matter what job. We are the artisan. We are the master of our energy and the application and the fortitude and the creative inspiration that applies mind with wisdom, with the will to create, with the will to believe in the self and in the prosperity and abundance of our existence. Change direction with ease. Number five. This is a time for change, shape-shifting, or your soul's evolution. It's time to reconsider what you're wanting. You may be in for a surprise. Definitely. So with this sexuality energy and all of the cards that have come forward since then, it's like a return to the, uh, what's the word for this? The, the essence of soul that wants to speak through this, this experience and this creation that is self and becoming aware of what lights us up, what passion 
has become perhaps dormant or underexpressed? And can we give that passion a healthy outlet? Can we believe in being met with equal reciprocal attention, effort, and, and to apply that? It's like a return to our soul mission, our soul embodiment, instead of being beside the self, coming really, really deeply back into the center here. So let's get one other card. We're running short on time. I hope that you guys enjoyed the message and were able to feel how this applies to your own personal circumstance. We'll take this one. Black Bear Guardian. Gentle and wise protector, give me your confidence and power. Help me to protect the ones I love. Awaken my intuition and guide me. There's that little baby, the innocence, next to those little birds. And under the deck, the frog. We had frog yesterday. Speaking of this prosperity and our ability to perceive and apply it through the joyful soul song, the resonance of our beauty and our energy. That's the difference of pushing buttons and dancing through the motions of life. Let go of the past and embrace change. Opportunities are close at hand. Hop into this new day with joy. Abundance and good fortune await you. As well, I would sus suspect uh, a return to health and well-being in many different ways. So I hope that you met some good messages that are meaningful for yourself and we'll leave it here until next time all take care and we'll see you next time